India is such a big, diverse country that it's easy to make misconceptions about it. I know before I came to India for the very first time, I had certain ideas about this country that I found to be way wrong after living and traveling here for over a thousand days. Almost a thousand days. By the time you watch it, it'll probably be a thousand days. Sometimes I read about or watch videos from travelers who've had a poor experience in India, and I wonder if it's because their expectations were misplaced from reality. I recently made a video about the different expectations and misconceptions some people have about India and the actual reality that I've seen. So if you want to check that out, check it right there. In the comments of that video, many of the viewers also pointed out a number of other misconceptions as well as one big mistake I myself made, Whoa. my own misconception. So let's go through 10 more misconceptions about India. So if you're traveling here, you can have an accurate expectations and prepare for your trip, have an amazing time. And let's also at the end of the video, cover a mistake I made so that we can clear up the record and help you out the most. Let's do this. Let's go. First off, I think a lot of people think that Indians are predominantly uneducated. This is not true. India has some very highly ranked universities. IIT is super hard to get into here in India. Harder than Harvard, harder than Yale, harder than Michigan State University where this guy went. Here's one of the local universities or colleges. Education is very important to people here. This is one reason why Indian immigrants who go to the USA make far more than other immigrant populations. Of course, in some of the small villages, there are still a good number of people who are uneducated or illiterate, but this number is decreasing. Especially in big cities, when you're in a place like Bangalore, it's very easy to converse with people who speak great English, who are obviously very well educated and ambitious in their career. <laughs> Recording in front of a bathroom. But I think a lot of people have a misconception that all Indian toilets are an Indian style toilet. I don't know if India came up with this toilet, but you know the toilet on the ground, the squat toilet. First off, in my experience, 99% of the toilets that I've used or been offered have been Western style toilets. The hotels have them, the restaurants have them, the tourist places have them. The places that won't are probably like the roadside dabas or the little restaurants or uh, rest areas you might stop along a trip. Now I could also go into why a squat toilet is better since it helps things pass in a more uh, conducive manner. But just know that if you're looking for Western toilets, they got them here. Toilet paper though, however, is harder to get and you're not gonna get the really cushy, uh, nice, soft, thick stuff that you might get in America. Irresistible has deep down squeezable softness. But they do have the bum gun, the hose by the side of the toilet that does an amazing job cleaning. Feels kind of good. It's also very hygienic and if you learn to use it, with a bit of TP or another uh, wipe type substance, I think you're gonna be very happy with the results. <laughs> Dude, those guys are so hilarious. We need more pictures like this in America. Rickshaw drivers are also apparently gonna be scamming you out of lots of money. If you've watched any videos from other YouTubers, you've probably seen experiences of this because this is a popular type of video. Rickshaw driver is pretty rude and charges far more than what a typical person would pay. That's how it goes. And while there is a negotiation period with most rickshaw drivers, from my experience, maybe it's just where I'm from. Maybe I need to travel more to certain places. But they seem pretty upstanding. Maybe because I also take precautions to have a good idea how much it costs to go from where I need to go to where I am. Usually they'll want to get you in the rickshaw without quoting a price. So at the end, that's when they quote it. Don't do that. All you need to do is ask the hotel front desk how much does it cost to go from here to here? They'll give you a ballpark and then just quote that as soon as you meet a rickshaw driver. They say no, find someone else. I like to ride with someone who I like, so through the negotiation process, if I get a bad vibe from them, I'll go find someone else. Most people seem like they have good humor about it. In fact, it's taught me a lot about how to have good humor through a negotiation. If you don't want to deal with it, India also has Uber and Ola Cab in most cities. You can pull up your phone and even find a rickshaw with a fixed price and a good price. Or of course you can find a car and ride in that as well. From my perspective, it seems like there's so many options to get around inexpensively with friendly people that I don't think we should focus on the few that are the scammers, the not too nice people. I've ridden taxis in New York City, so I imagine if you're in that lifestyle, you probably become a certain way, especially around tourists who wants to hang out with them. All the animals come out at night. I also had this conception about the 
fruit and veg stalls, which are popular, when I would go to them, I would always think people were charging me a, a way higher price than what the locals were paying. And in some cases, that was a little bit true. But most of the time, I found that they would offer me a fair price. When I first came and I was told a price, I would always negotiate like 50% of whatever they said. It didn't matter. They could say 10 rupees and I'd be like 5 rupees. 1,000 rupees, 500 Because I had no idea what the price was. After going to a number of these different stalls, I found that almost everyone is going to offer me a price that's very close to what the locals are paying. I like to just go to a stall, find a person who I like, who I can tell they seem trustable. I want to work with them. I got a guy I go to now. Whatever he says, I pay. No negotiation. I don't care. I only pay 250 or 300 rupees a week for vegetables, and I eat a lot of vegetables. So if there is a little bit of an increase, it's not with much. With some people, you can kind of tell they're lying. Maybe because I used to work at a school and dealt with little kids that were sometimes uh, not telling me the truth, so I could tell a liar. And if I see a liar at a stall, I'll just go to the next place. Most people are going to give you a decent price, though. Many people think that all Indians are vegetarians when that isn't true. Or if you're listening to advice about what to eat in India so you don't get sick, you may be told, do not eat meat. And in general, that's a good approach. However, if I would have not eaten meat while I was in India, I would really regret it because there are some delicious meat dishes and actually a good portion of Indians do eat meat. You just need to find a good place to eat meat like this one place I went to in Agra with my mom and my aunt. Or or in Kerala, you can find many dishes, including beef. Seafood is super popular. In Kolkata, you can find a lot of meat dishes. In Goa, you can find a lot of meat. It really varies by state, which is one of the amazing things about India. The food varies so much from state to state, from place to place, from restaurant or house to house. They really have a different way of thinking about and approaching food that I recommend tasting as much as possible. And you can get healthy meat dishes. Just be careful about where you eat eat at a great place. I'm in a small city in Tamil Nadu and I don't often eat meat because it's not that popular here. But as you can see, there are some places along this road where you can get meat. People do eat it. I'm sure if I were to look, I could find some safe, healthy, good places to eat meat. Another misconception that I had before coming to India was that the trains would be super crazy and chaotic. I read a book called Shantaram and in the book, he hired this huge guy to get him into the lowest class train and there was pushing and there was shoving and there was fighting and all of this stuff that I was expecting, which hasn't been my experience. India has so many different options for trains from maybe something similar to that, I'm not quite sure, I never saw it, but maybe, to something very luxurious. And the train that I took was somewhere in the middle. Maybe we were in the second class, I think. We had a guide show us to our seats and there was actually someone in my aunt's seat. He left after being asked to leave but uh, we slept on the train. We went many hours through the night to a new place and for a low, low price, we had a good experience. It was cool to watch India, the beautiful countryside, go past. You have a nice place to sleep. I'm gonna travel on trains as much as I possibly can. I also had a misconception about the healthcare here in India. In fact, I paid a lot of money to get some dental work done before I came to India and when I came here, I had friends that came here and were like, I waited to get all my dental work done because I figured out that I could have saved 90% of my money had I got my dental work done here. And the facilities are pretty darn good. When I've been to the hospital for my vaccine and my COVID test, I've also been very impressed with the facilities. They look clean, they look safe. This is an important subject though, so please do your own research. I just have to say from my experience, there are older people who live in this place where I live and it seems like they're getting good care. I've been impressed. I would get my care here and feel safe. It's one of the reasons why I stayed during the COVID vaccine lockdown. What about snake charmers though? Aren't snake charmers everywhere around India? That's one thing that I was thinking and I thought it'd be cool to see some. There are some, I saw one in Varanasi, but for the most part, people aren't charming snakes over here. I read that there was a specific caste in Rajasthan that was known for charming snakes throughout the generations. But as animal rights have gained more popularity for, for good uh, reason, you're not going to find a whole lot of that. And the ones that you will find, it's not like a real snake charmer. I won't kill the mystery for you, so it's fun if that's what you're into. Don't get your hopes too high up for the snake charmer. And 
finally, I said that I would cover one of the mistakes I made in my last video by stating that Hindi and English were the official languages of India. Now, quick interruption, if you're liking the video, please click that like button and help this video go out to more people. Let's be clear, there are no national languages of India. I was accurate in saying it is the official language as designated by the Constitution, Article 343. However, it also designates that each state has the power and freedom to choose their own official language. And this is why there's such a diversity of languages around India. I'm in Tamil Nadu, and if I go to the next state, Kerala, there's a totally new language. Or if I go north, there's a totally new language. This is one of the language. things that can make traveling India such a unique experience. If you have a question about India or a misconception you can share with others, please let us know in the comments. Tune in next week for another video about beautiful India.